Welcome back. Now, the minority in Parliament says it has for the past three years observed with concern what it refers to as the unfair treatment being meted out to these young trained teachers who have devoted themselves to serve the nation in a capacity that many people have chosen to avoid. According to them, the introduction of the licensure examination has negatively affected teacher trainees. Now, just last week, Education Minister Yao Osei Duchum spoke about how he is unhappy about the high failure rates in the recent licensure examination, despite the lowering of the pass mark. Now, out of the 27,455 candidates who sat for the 2020 teacher licensure examination, 8,872 failed to meet that number. This number represents 30.7% of the total candidates who sat for the exams in October last year. At that interactive session with the leadership of the National Union of Ghana Students, the Education Minister said there was the opportunity for a reset for those who failed. We'll speak to the minority shortly, but first, the Education Minister, Yawase Edichu. The, they do the main one where all the colleges of education students participate. And then there's another off-season one where uh, those who did not pass will then have opportunity to reset. And then also those who did distance education can then reset. Now the last time, the last one that they did, a report came to me that students didn't do well. They brought me sample responses. And Mr. President, it's important that we, we hold um, ourselves accountable to a certain standard. And that if you want to teach, uh, we need to help you uh, to really have the requisite skills to teach. I, I don't want to even talk about the pass mark which was set. It was brought so low, yet some people did not bring the cut. Uh, those who were doing research, um, some of them were able to make it. Those who did it for the first time, um, about 78% were able to pass three. Sorry, two out of the three, 78%. But if you look at those who pass all the three for the first time, it was about 23%. And they have opportunity to sit again and be able to pass it, just like those who did reset and was able to make it. So I had uh, discussions with the NTC, National Teaching Council, and another exam is coming up. I also instructed that they need to have a web portal with thousands of questions for people to have the opportunity to practice because you don't want people to s walk into an exam to do it and they ha don't have the benefit of sample questions that they can use to prepare for the exam. So NTC have taken it up as a responsibility to make sure sample questions are available and that they can even do a sample. Just like we prepare for exams anywhere in the world, you really have to give them something. Now, there have been calls for a review or abolition of the policy, but the government says it has come to stay. The minority has issued a statement. Dr. Clementa Park is MP for Bilsa South and the minority spokesperson on education. He joins us on the telephone. Good morning, Dr. Clementa Park, and welcome to Desk. Yes, good morning to you and to viewers and uh, listeners. Uh, <laughs> just a quick one. I'm the deputy ranking member on the committee okay. for education. Yes, but yes. of course, I am one of the spokespersons when it comes to matters of uh, education for the party and then our side in parliament. Okay, right. Well, thank you very much for that clarification and we appreciate your time this morning. Let's dive straight into it. So my first question, a part of your statement reads, and I quote, what is frustrating is that after the teacher trainees have gone through a three-year program and having to obtain a number of credits to qualify as teachers, a six-hour aptitude test or examination is conducted to determine their professional competence. The question one asks is that can a six-hour examination correct or rectify any inadequacies or inefficiencies in the teacher that a three-year program of study could not correct? Let's begin with you answering that question for us, Doc. Well, first of all, we have said, and we would say again, and has captured in our 2020 manifesto that the teacher licensure exam as it is currently structured is not useful. We say so because 
We don't believe that it ought to be the case that students would go and train for three good years in teacher training colleges, pass every single exam, and then after they are done, they are then tested again, as we said, only six hours based on an aptitude test before they are then deemed worthy or qualified or capable of teaching. When we are in dire need of thousands of teachers, when we have invested colossal amounts of money to train them, feeding them, giving them an allowance, so from the onset, we have said that, look, there is no reason why, even if we are to have a licensing process, it cannot be done within the context of the structures available at the teacher training colleges. There is no reason why this processes of licensing them cannot become part of the curriculum for them to go through that process just as they do with all the other subject areas that they have to go through to qualify to become teachers rather than this six hour aptitude test. So economically, it doesn't make sense. Practically, it is defeatist because we train teachers, expend monies, and then they have to sit home because they didn't pass a six-hour test. And in fact, it is not also fair to the students and their parents. I mean, think about how it feels to have to go through all of that. So we are raising the legitimate questions that we raised before. And I think that everyone listening to us, genuinely, if we were to compare the alternative that we are proposing to what is happening, ours is much more humane and realistic and allows for free flow for them to finish and go and start teaching. We need them in the classrooms. That is why we are investing in them. So they can make a living, support their families, and then teach our awards. Right. There are many schools across the length and breadth of this country struggling to have teachers. Okay. Um, Dr. Park, let me move on to, to my next question. So the minority have said that it is more treatment to insist that the teachers pass the exam. Um, based on what then will they teach our children? Because if you argue um, that this six-hour you know, aptitude test is not a, a good reflection, a good indicator of what they've learned, knowing the curriculum of what they've learned and assuming that based on that curriculum the questions were set what are you asking then that um, the foundation for their teaching be built on well you don't as we said in our statement you cannot use a six hour aptitude test to conclude that somebody who has gone through three years of rigorous training including practical doesn't qualify to teach. That is the point we are making. In any case, if that is if if, if government is using this attitude test to suggest that many of the products of the teacher training colleges are not fit for purpose, is it not an indictment on government itself and the Ministry of Education? Doesn't that suggest that there are challenges? as far as these same teacher trainees are concerned in the institutions that train them. And whose responsibility is it to fix that? 
Dr. Park, Dr. Park, I just want to ask um, this, this question. So doctors, for example, write exams, you know, when they finish medical school. Um, the lawyers, after they've been trained, have to write the bar exam, for example. Nurses have to write an exam. You know, we have professional exams. So, so what exactly is the problem if, you know, after you've trained for three years, there's a standard licensing exam that you have to write? The question that I really want you to clarify for me um, is that are these teachers being asked to write an exam that is outside the scope of their training? Is that what the problem is? Because if well, it isn't, then they should be able to answer the questions. If they are not doing well, as we are being told, <laughs> that means something is not right. I don't set the question. I don't read them. But given the, uh, the, 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 the lamentations of the minister himself, that means that something is not right. And we ought to look at that. And our position in the minority is not that exams should not be written. We are not saying that teachers should not be licensed. We are saying that that can be done within the context of the structures already available at the teacher training colleges. And we are also saying so because in the case of the teacher trainees becoming, you know, teachers assigned jobs to go and teach, it is not just the issue of the licensure exam. It is also the compulsory National service, where we also think that it is also another waste of time when we need them in the classrooms. They do practicals for one year, for God's sake. That should be classified and used as their national service. We need them. And so anything that is going to prevent us from getting use of teachers, anything that is going to keep teachers at, away from the classroom, we ought to address them and look at ways that we can still you know, make sure that they are adequately prepared, but in a way that is not going to impact the nation negatively in terms of their unavailability in the classroom. Dr. Park, um, you know, the, the unavailability issue, it, it worries me a little bit because are, are we... I would like to believe that you're not in any way saying that we should compromise on quality because teachers are so largely responsible for the future of our nation in that they are teaching our children. Um, so should the focus not be fixing their education so that they are actually equipped to pass these exams as opposed to scrapping the exams totally just because they're not passing it? You see, you are misunderstanding the argument of the minority. Okay, please explain and it I will to suggest me. that you take another look at the statement. I have what looked at the statement. What we are proposing is another medium of testing them and certifying them. And Dr. Park, before you continue, there's also the claim that it was actually the NDC that initiated this idea of the licensure exams, but then yes. lost power in 2016. So you the weren't idea, able yes. to implement but it. The, the idea that we had was not to have a separate entity called the NTC administering an exam mm. outside of the confines of the already existing structures in the colleges of education. Okay. So the idea that we had in terms of the way it should be done is exactly what we have contained in our manifesto. It's exactly what is contained in our statement. So the idea, yes, and that is why we are not opposed to licensing teachers. It is the mode and the method by which it is being done that we are opposed to. Okay, so are you um, suggesting, or would the NDC's plan have been to put together the credits from the training college and then license these teachers, or would the NDC have wanted these exams? What, what exactly would the minority have done in this situation? The processes of certifying them would have become part of their training. Right. They will write all the other exams, and because they are being trained to become professionals, there will be a separate program that they would all have to take, after which they will write, then write the exam. And they pay on the basis of that, right. which okay. we expect them to pass, they will be licensed. Okay. Uh, remember that in the minister's statement, mm -hmm. the minister himself is attributing the mass failure to the lack of preparing them for the licensure exam. He is even talking about making past questions available to them. Right. That means our alternative would have solved all of this problem because they would have been taken through a program and then they would write the exam like all the other ex uh, the other papers that they would write. So are, you going to, school. so are you going to invite the minister to, you know, have a sort of discussion with him and maybe put your suggestions across? Actually, I would not. 
Because the, the ministry, this government, they never pay heed to all the pieces of advice that we give them. Mm, I see. It has been there, we've spoken about it, it's now manifesto. They choose to do it their own way, and that is the way they've always acted. So I wouldn't waste my time engaging the minister or the ministry. Our role is to put out these issues and let Ghanaians know that they have alternatives. Right. Okay, well, thank you very much um, for joining us this morning.